Well, signs of political violence began to show here at the Mshaya Zafir Hostel in Togoza in about 1989. And by about 1990, full-scale violence had erupted. The political conflict in Togoza was bloody, costing thousands of lives. Hostility between the IFP and ANC spilled over into the East Rand. One of the darkest moments pre-democracy, described by some as an act of provocation. Years later, Butelezi apologized. My brothers and sisters, myself, I also do this knowing that because we are human beings and they have seen us, that we will start head, heading each other even tomorrow. I never the less apologize for the past heads. I would just say on the record that on no occasion has the Gala Freedom Party's leadership ever made any decision anywhere at any time to use violence for political purposes. I've always abhorred violence, I abhor violence now, and I will die abhorring violence. I personally have never made any decision to employ violence anywhere for any purpose whatsoever. Nothing but violence can come out of violence. Nothing but the destruction of peace and the destruction of the prospect of peace can come out of violence. My own deep conviction is that violence is evil and must not be used for political purposes. And despite the Ghana Freedom Party's constant vision to keep violence out of the Ghana Freedom Party's politics, I know that the Ghana Freedom Party members and supporters have been drawn into violence. I say I'm sorry to South Africa for this because although I've not orchestrated one single act of violence against one single victim of the political violence that has cost us so many lives, as the leader of the Ghana Freedom Party, I know that the buck stops right in front of me. SABC News tracked down one of the men involved in that violence. He says it's a moment in the country's history which remains etched in his mind. And he has the scars to show it. Hey. He says it was war year. He says they also collected money to buy guns. The war broke out several times. He says that war seems to have been in vain because the only beneficiaries or those whose lives changed are those in Parliament. The emotional scars of the survivors run deep. Spiti Sbeko was a young activist who had gone off to university. He saw his home in Togoza engulfed in flames in 1992. Actually, since that incident, which is nearly 31 years ago, I've never slept in Togoza. So ever since then, that was um, the last time I slept at my home. So um, what I remember uh, vividly, let alone that I lost friends, I lost very close family members. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the burning down of my home. And uh, you cannot believe how it happened. I was at varsity. I had gone uh, to, uh, back to school much earlier because obviously of violence. So I needed a bit of a refuge and uh, varsity was my refuge. So I had slept uh, because I was doing my postgraduate degree then and uh, it was time for exam. So I had taken a nap uh, during the day and uh, at about uh, six, uh, just after six, I got up 
and uh, I was about to get something to eat. Uh, something said, no, no, no. Uh, a friend said, no, let's just watch news and from here we're going to uh, go and, um, and, and get food. So uh, we put on a, a, a telly and um, I think after a couple of minutes, then the news uh, started, the SAPC coincidental news. I think it must have been a TV3 then. And uh, when uh, uh, I think the very first shot that came up was my niece. And, um, and, uh, my, and my brother, and they were running around and, uh, and my home was burning. It was so surreal because here I was, I don't know what just urged me to watch the, the telly then. And uh, to see your home burning and you're almost 400 or 500 kilometers away, you're so hopeless. And uh, you just start thinking, my good grace me, I wonder what happened to my, my family, I wonder what happens to uh, everyone else. Uh, because by then, obviously, violence was at its, uh, at its apex and uh, things were really, really uh, bad uh, in, in, in Togoza. So, and uh, so, I mean, uh, the clip ran and uh, they then interviewed my brother. I mean, all he could say is, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, we've been attacked. Political analyst Zakel Lindlovo believes the blame should not be laid at the doorstep of one political party. I think that we have to be very careful sometimes to not easily attribute all the blame to one individual. Uh, and in this case, I'm, I'm talking about Dr. Mangoso to Butelis. Um, I, I, I think it's fair to say that um, because the IFP had been the ruling party in KwaZulu, and so when the UDF was born in the early 1980s, uh, we saw competition between the IFP and the UDF. And, and what we have seen uh, in South Africa is that there's this tendency to, to not um, tolerate competition. And depending on which side of the fence you're standing, some will celebrate Butelezi's contribution to the struggle for freedom, and for others, the memories of the bloodshed still too painful. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News in Johannesburg.